everybody um, I just wanted to show you that I got I swept up a bag and a half large bags of leaves and um, I'm gonna just toss it in my on on top of the ground and it's gonna be my ground cover um, in my area that my compost area um, I kind of like swept everything away from the area where the chickens used to be and um, all that stuff's kind of plowed over and it's, it's nice and loose soil. However, um, there are a lot of viney things and branches and things that are there. And I'm just gonna pour the, the leaves, the leaves up on top of it all, and it will start to decay as it rains and stuff. And um, a lot of them are maple leaves, I believe, um, and they come in small sizes because they've been crushed, you know, driven upon, and then they're they're in whole big pieces. So it's really good and it's just gonna break down in that one spot and I'm just gonna um, let that sit for the winter and come spring I think it should be usable and uh, sometimes I throw this in the coop as well and and then they, the birds have something to you know run around on and help break it apart. Over here is my first garden bed. It's all covered up. Um, it's meant to keep everything kind of uh, warm and in fact it's warm enough that it's growing squash on the other side of this uh, bed and then on this side as you can see there's a tomato, a baby tomato, um, see a baby tomato growing right there and the little yellow blossom and there's a giant basil growing uh, next to it and several other um, brassicas mint and such and then this is my second patch of calla lilies growing I mean canna canna lilies growing and it's doing great it's spawning little babies and over here was my first batch, which has the uh, papaya and the, the canna lilies, which are still sprouting babies, and some uh, brassicas. So this is where we've moved the rabbits and the chickens and it's going to be lovely. Over there is where the chickens used to be. So that's where I'm going to be putting all this leaf matter and and it will break down. So that's what's happening here in the garden this November and uh, sorry we've been away for a while. Um, just busy trying to keep the the plants warm, covering them up and putting plastic around them. Um, and now the the latest thing is gathering all these leaves. So hope you have a great one. And uh, you know, if you haven't started, you can still start and keep gardening with me. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Hi guys, I'm constantly dumping leaves here. Um, I have to definitely get leaves this year to place onto the ground as uh, this year with the pandemic. Uh, the city has cessated the wood chip drop program so we couldn't order anything and um, so I'm having to find other ways to cover the ground and um, 
so that way when it rains it's going to soak up all that that rainwater and it'll act as a sponge and it'll um, keep the soil here on this property instead of evaporating and um, going under the ground so easily. <clears throat> so that is the problem this year. I'm going to have to definitely buckle down and get a lot of leaves. So hope you give it a try as well if you can't get a hold of mulch and wood chips as I have. Good morning everyone. Um, I haven't seen any tips on how to grow persimmons and um, so here I have a persimmon seed. Um, a couple of them and here are the others. I've soaked them in, in water overnight and what I'm gonna do here is called scarification. So what you do is you just you just uh, scrape the edge of it so that it has this white I'm not sure if you can see it this white segment right here and it just opens up the seed a little bit otherwise this hard cover takes forever this outer covering takes forever to break down and I've tried growing them just straight potting the seeds into the soil and it doesn't um, come out with a plant so what I've discovered is you have to scarify it and basically you're scraping off a little bit of that outer layer and and so look at all these marks that I have on the ground and that will allow the seed to push out the roots rather quickly and easily and I've done that with the rest of these seeds and now I'm going to pot them and I've already labeled the um, the label and it's a bigger taller variety of Fuyu persimmons but they look like the other variety that needs to um, soften in order to eat but this is actually Fuyu and it's a it's a really great fruit so give it a try I'm gonna pot these up right now and I will try to keep you posted on its growth because if you don't scarify it may never or it will way eventually way later um, uh, root but when you do it this way within that season it will um, push out roots and you'll have a plant thank you for watching so I saw this beautiful milkweed and it was growing right here and it, earlier the bloom was just gorgeous and I kept it that way and then recently I saw how it was going kind of uh, milky and mildewy and there were aphids um, in, in there and I was about to pull it out and I still hesitated because I wanted the bees and other insects to um, to pollinate and have food to eat so I left it alone and lo and behold I thought the season was over for um, itty bitty um, caterpillars. I thought that they've already gone t to South America or something, but here I have the tiniest little itty bitty, I believe, monarch caterpillar. Um, it's, it has yellow, white, and black striations. And um, I believe it's the same kind of, uh, it's going to be the same kind of butterfly that, that had been in my sister's yard. My sister had a milkweed and it had a little um, caterpillar that, well actually it was a pretty big caterpillar that had the same kind of striations, colors and um, it was uh, huge and then we, we saw it every, from week to week and then um, it became a chrysalis and then um, it hatched and so I thought that there wouldn't be any more but here it is and I just love seeing nature um, 
here in my homestead and here is how milkweed um, seeds look like so it has kind of a, a pod and then it opens up and it has these tiny little seeds with fuzzy ends and that probably gets blown by the wind or gets stuck on some kind of animal and then gets taken off somewhere else. This milkweed just uh, sprung up on its own. It volunteered. I did not plant it here, but I enjoy it and I welcome it. And um, I'm gonna take those seeds and spawn more milkweeds and maybe have a mini butterfly garden in this area. And that's great for kids to enjoy and look at and learn all about. And also I've learned that butterflies come to milkweeds because they like to eat the leaves and so you'll see leaf holes on the leaves. But um, more importantly, the butterflies come in and feed on it and they lay their eggs on the bottom side of the leaves. And the eggs are little tiny yellowish orange little dots and um, they're about a millimeter wide or one and a half millimeter wide and um, then they hatch and that's how the caterpillars come about and then they just keep feeding on the plants um, I hope this is enough for it and then uh, when it feeds on it and grows it then converts to the chrysalis form so we'll keep you updated on that